Hey man, good morning world. It's your boy John Granger. What's going on? Checking in uh, from uh, Allentown, Pennsylvania this morning. Uh, sitting out looking at all the snow on the ground, man. It's about, uh, I don't know, it's about 10 degrees, I think. 8, 9, 10 degrees. It is super cold. It is snowing up here in Pennsylvania. I uh, came up for uh, some of the Super Bowl festivities this week. So I'm sitting in my hotel room and saw this video uh, that a friend posted uh, in, on Facebook. And the video was by a guy named T.S. Madison. It's a dude, a transsexual. And at first I was really confused. Because I mean, honestly, I was wondering what her fascination was with this transsexual guy. And then I watched it. And for the... <laughs> For the most part, it was disturbing. But then when I opened up my mind, and not just so much my eyes, but I opened up my ears and my mind, and I listened. I really listened. I wasn't just hearing the guy. I would listen. And I started to uh, marinate and meditate on what the dude was saying. So anyway, the guy was speaking on, you know, all these females are attacking him because of his shape and his body. Uh, the fact that he wanted to be a woman. But he made it very clear in particular that he had no desire to be like them. His desire utmost was to be like his, his mother. And he spoke that simply because he said that he was raised in a single parent home with his mother uh, and no fatherly influence. He said he grew up idolizing Linda Carter. For those of you that don't know, that was Wonder Woman, the original Wonder Woman. He grew up idolizing the sexual prowess and power of the woman over a man and he grew up idolizing his mother because his mother was a self-proclaimed independent strong woman that needed no man that could do it all herself and uh, so this guy said he grew up basically standing in his mom's heels and because there was no father there he never stood in his father's shoes and I think that's ironic because if you think about it, there's even a statement uh, that, that goes something to the intent of uh, don't try to be a man unless you can walk a mile in his shoes. And I think that is kind of ironic because that's what our sons do. They step into their dad's shoes. If your shoes, if you have a kid, especially a son, and I do, I have two beautiful sons and a daughter. If you ever step into these boys, uh, those are my biologicals, by the way. Uh, I also have two sons that are like my, my stepsons, my boys. So, four boys uh, that I love to death and a beautiful little girl. And also, I have a mentoring group and I work with some other boys through the shrine and also through uh, the school system that I've been doing for the last couple of years. But anyway, if you ever look at these kids, man, and they're in the house, if you put your shoes on the floor, they will, or one of them will eventually step into your shoes to to get a fit of them. And they're not stepping into them to see, you know, how stylish they are. They're stepping into them to see how far do I have to go before I can fit these shoes, you know, before I can stand like that, before I can, you know, walk this walk, before I can do what he does before I can be him you know my daughter she asked me constantly dad you know am I gonna grow your size and my son he is infatuated with being my height I'm six foot four uh 240 pounds so my son's constantly oh dad 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 am I gonna be your size and I'm like man you're gonna be bigger than me one day you know and when I say that his eyes just light up with this glow like really I'm gonna be bigger than you oh man and he's so happy and I sit back now after watching T.S. Madison's video and I think, what if I wasn't around? Whose shoes would my son be trying to get in? Whose shoes would he be standing in? Would he be standing in his mom's shoes? You know, saying, you know, mom, am I going to be as fine as you? You know, mom, am I going to be able to dance like you? Mom, am I going to be able to twerk? Not saying, not saying that that's what any of my children's mothers do uh, not the same uh, different relationships uh, not saying that that's what they do you know twerk shake booty 
But if that's what they were doing, then would my sons be standing in their shoes saying, Mom, I sure want to shake my booty like you. Ooh, Mama, your breasts look so good how you got it in that in that little bra sticking out your shirt. Or, you know, Mom, will I be able to control and trick these men like you? Or, Mom, you know, will I be able to, well, I look as good as you when I go to the club. Now, that's just for the twerker types. But, you know, if she was a powerful businesswoman, you know, in the same respect or, or in a different regard, you know, when my son say, Mom, I want to be a strong and powerful woman, black woman like you, a businesswoman, I want to be, you know, Miss Independent. You know, I think it's, we have to be very careful and very mindful of the words that we use because as the Bible says it's a uh, double-edged blade or double-edged sword. You know, the tongue is a very powerful thing. You know, when you're claiming independent, you're claiming you don't need anyone. Uh, when you speak against a child's father, uh, and Lord, ladies, 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 I definitely know that there are a lot of absent black fathers. I definitely know that if I had a hat, I'd take it off to you. And I would say, you know, good job. But uh, I think we be, we have to be very mindful of what we say about the opposite sex because you have to realize, especially when you're raising the opposite sex, when you create a bad image of the father or the male figure, you also create in the child a bad mirror image when they look at themselves especially when you make statements of you look just like your father you act just like your father you remind me of your father then they see themselves and if you have created a negative image they see a negative image can you imagine the difference I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you two scenarios okay you take one child that sees his dad get up every day go to work I mean, put his clothes on, stand in the mirror, whatever he does, whether he's a lawyer or a doctor, a trash man, a football player, a professional baseball player, stockbroker, internet, uh, entrepreneur, uh, barbecue man, whatever this man's hat may be. But he gets up every day proudly and he puts on the uniform of his craft and he laces up his sh those boots, those shoes, those wingtips, those Stacey Adams, those cowboy boots, those cleats, whatever. And he goes out there on that battlefield and he goes to work every day. And he looks at that child before he leaves and he says, hey, love you. Have a good day. Make me proud. Do your thing now. Then that child, okay, daddy, I got you. Because to that child, that child is emulating his father, doing the same thing. That child is putting on that school uniform, lacing up those little black tennis shoes, putting on that book bag, getting ready to go to battle, getting ready to go do his craft. Because his father has given him an example of what a man should do, what a man should be. You should get up, and, or if you work at night, or the evening or the swing shifts or weekends or two jobs, whatever it is. But the child is sitting there watching the father and he's emulating him and he's saying, oh, I got to get up and I got to go do this because that's what daddy do. And the child's going to get up and he's going to go grind and he's going to go get it. And that child is going to go to school and he is going to do his best and he's going to come back home or she, he or she is going to come back home because my daughter does it oh, all the time and I'm so proud. Daddy. And we have a statement with my daughter because she gets grades, you know, A through Fs or whatever. That's the grading scale. I'm not saying she gets A through F, but the grading scale is A through F. And then they have a conduct, which is S's, E's, and N's, and U's, like, you know, most other schools. Uh, A's being the best grade, and, of course, um, E's being excellent. So I have a statement that I always tell my daughter before she goes to school. I say, baby, what we getting today? A's and E's? She say, A's and E's, daddies. You know what I mean? A's and E's. That's it. That's all daddy want to see. I, you know, if you get B's or you get S's, I can deal with it, but I'm not happy with it. If you can earn A's and E's, I want A's and E's. Because to be a young black child, especially a young black woman, you got to work twice as hard to get half as far in this society. And that's what I instill in them. Uh, I wish that I saw my own boys every day, but I don't. But I still try to instill my, my power and my proudness in them to be uh, young men of virtue. You know, just like I do all the boys in my group. And uh, what I want to say is all parents, present and absent, we must do better. We must do better. This is part one of my video. I'll be right back.